Yay, it started. Yay. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Mistress of Reads. I am Miss OP or Mistress OP, <laughs> if you're really nasty. You're you know the worst me. part is the initials of my first name. How hard is that to say for me today? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Somebody peed on the bar. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Madame Wu. And this woman forgets her name like every show. It's hilarious. Love it. It's because I'm not being paid. If you pay me, <laughs> that's just a terrible thing to say. Okay, let me bring up the levels on you because you should be a little bit higher than me. All right. So we were talking. Now we have this little, which you may have run across or you may not have because this is the magical future and you have somehow found us because we are just this gem and a pile of YouTube Redness, okay? Sure. <laughs> that works for me. I, I was going to say something else, but I, I felt the need to. Uh, so we have found this, and, and you're thinking, oh, my God, there's more urban fantasy? What is urban fantasy? Because, you know, you might not have known. You may have only read a couple of books, and you just realized that, oh, my God, I like this genre. What am I going to do? What do I read next? Because there's nothing like coming off an amazing book only to read one that sucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> it's like you know this is kind of okay. This is an adult channel, so I'm sorry, but it's like when you come off a good dick and the next one's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that you you want a resume for dick from now on and oh. you want you want the fool to apply all the things, you want to make sure he spends enough time you know, in areas you want to make sure he understands what's going on because you can't get into another relationship and it'd be bad dick. But wait, Just before saying. we continue on about bad dick, we have to wish Raven happy birthday. It's the yes, big three O. Yes, happy birthday, Raven. Welcome to the dark side. Yes. <laughs> three O. Dirty thirty. Yeah. <laughs> you're at that great you're at that great age. Well now you don't have to give a fuck if you offend people or not. Yes. <laughs> and, and guess what? For your present, more urban fantasy. Because you, yeah, you, you, you know, she's just now, what is she? She's only been reading urban fantasy for the last two or three years. Two years? Yeah. She actually is the one that first mentioned to me uh, the Jane Yellow Rock Jane series. Yellow series. Yeah. So it's been about five years since she No, no. Into... I said something to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, I was, I, she said something and then I said something, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to make it out of the first couple books. That's the problem with Jane Yellow Rock. That's, <laughs> we have in our urban fantasy playlist oh, us oh. talking about Jane Yellow Rock. We talk the hell out of it. <laughs> so if you're reading this series Maybe. and you get to a point and you have nobody to discuss it with, please feel free to discuss it with us. Leave some comments. Talk to us about it. We enjoy when you talk to us. Thank you for thumbs upping our thingy on Goodreads about it. For the ladies who thumbs up our hate of um. Ricky, Ricky Bo, because we, we're usually <laughs> plotting his death, which is hilarious. <laughs> Ricky Bo, I mean, and the ladies on Goodreads, thank you so much for our, you know, you can feel the hate, the hate. You Wait, need. I remember, I forgot what it was. The book where he was, uh, where he actually got turned into a wear, and I just remember, like, I finished the book and I was so angry. And you're like, oh, you're mad, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And you're like, you're mad he didn't die. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, it's so hateful. It was so hateful. Now, here's what I love about urban fantasy. I love that it's not exactly, I love when an urban fantasy does it right. And it's not exactly focused on the romance yeah. completely. And it's not focused on the urban fantasy where you get this nice little mix of just goodness. It's a good cherry, like a really good fruit. <laughs> you know, I actually get mad at, at urban fantasy books when it, things get a little too, like, touchy-feely. Like, I'll actually get mad and walk I, away I, from it. I like emotional vulnerability in my strong characters. I love it when – I don't want whiny emotional vulnerability. I don't mind a character realizing that they can't save anybody, and that moment when they realize they can't save anybody, I'm okay with I, I don't mind that moment where a dark character solves a problem in a shitty, shitty way, and it's with vengeance and hate. And they solve the problem, and, you know, that, that dark hero sort of thing. I love that. And that See, vulnerability of moments, the hatefulness, I love that. What when makes I me mad is uh, 
What I hate what, is what, when it, it's supposed to be urban fantasy and there's a magical vagina that saves the world. Let's get into parent. I was just about to say, <laughs> but what I don't like is like, I, I, sometimes I, I can stand paranormal romance, but I just, the magical vagina syndrome <laughs> that you were talking about. Yes. <laughs> it, it makes me sad as a woman. Now I've seen magical vagina who gets her dick and then fights her, her fights her, her fights her, uh, fights her evil. You know, nothing wrong with getting your dick. I mean, <laughs> it's Mistress of Reeds. You know what I'm saying? We're down. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, is I don't like the Stucky Stucky Stackhouse. You know, was originally classified as urban fantasy, but it's actually paranormal romance. Correct? Yeah. The magical vagina that saves the world. That bitch has slept with every species. Everything. Yes, everything. <laughs> Although I love the fact that she slept with that werewolf. Even before I knew what the werewolf looked like, I was actually down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you weren't down. I, I was down with that. I was. I, but it's like... <sighs> and then they cast him on HBO, and I was down, down. I had that Sid. nice Italian dark skin. Man, that man is my flavor. Just, oh, and, and just, just a fierce fucking butt. Just a fierce one. Gorgeous body with an Italian name. You can't say that. And, that is my flavor. And nice, nice, meaty, meaty thighs. Mm. Oh, my God. Like, that was the main reason I watched True Blood, because I just, damn. <laughs> and, you ever see the thighs you just want to bite, like, right there? I, I was I wasn't watching on True Blood. I was never watching episodes he wasn't in. If he wasn't in an episode, I didn't watch it anymore because I didn't like Bill. I never liked Bill. See, I liked I, Eric though. I, I liked Eric sometimes, but I, I wanted Eric, Eric to start doing push-ups. <laughs> because he looks great in Tarzan. In. He looked he looked great in Tarzan. You mean you made me go watch Tarzan? <laughs> I did. I, <laughs> I just watched the trailer and Luke. <laughs> ah, candy. That's all we're about is just the eye candy. I think he did do, I did, he did do, but when he was in True Blood, he didn't have like a filled in chest because he was supposed to be looking like a vampire. What like kicked me not. in the ass though was to find out that he's actually a Norseman playing a Norseman whose name is Eric Northman. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he is though. He is like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little dorky, but that is something I don't like. I don't like to read it that often, and I think if 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 that whole Southern Vampire series, which I think is what she named it now, instead of Sticky Stackhouse, um, if that whole Southern Vampire series had come out like ten years later, I don't think I'd read it. I was so aggravated with the whole book series that I, I was even mad that our names are close to being spelled the same. Like that's how much she made me mad. <laughs> My child just dropped the ice down my shirt. I, I, I do not enjoy those series, but you know the Thea Harris. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read Thea Harris books. I started. Uh, uh, you did? Did you mm -hmm. like it? I like Thea Harris. She's paranormal romance with a lot of uh, paranormally stuff in it. You know, she's completely paranormal romance. <laughs> I love that paranormally stuff in it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, lots I'm of paranormal stuff in it. Lots of paranormal stuff in it. It's humid in Vegas and, and I'm thirsty, so you're going to be hearing me pour a lot of liquid. Don't worry. Don't <laughs> worry. I need some liquid, too. I just haven't even hit that point. I, I think that, though, I, I like it when they go to like the edge of paranormal romance or the edge of urban fantasy, and it has a nice little bit of both elements to it because – I've only read one urban fantasy series where the guy made sense, and that was the, the Mercy Thompson series. I agree with that, but also, okay, and and yes, this is this, the books are mentioned every damn episode, but I do Kern, feel yeah. that that it was you know very. I love mm -hmm. the action with the occasional love into action, like I and the understanding of footwork in a fight as well yeah. as martial art. It yeah. comes across very well. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think like they actually do that. Like they get up off their ass and do the physical blocking for a scene because it's very well laid out. It's always consistent. And it's a knowing of how an actual sword moves through the air and how it feels in your hand. 
it is a series that's so well done, especially with uh with, with um urban fantasy that you know I've gotten straight male friends to read the series and they're just like, oh, this is dope. Yeah, yeah. If, if there is a god, Netflix. I don't Andrews. know. They might fuck it I up. I prefer though. HBO, but I'll take no, Netflix. no. Don't never let HBO touch it. If ne- if anyone Netflix, never HBO. HBO fucks up shit. HBO is good with that. And then they get creative. Well, like, the series is pretty much complete, so they don't have to get creative. The only reason why they get creative with other series is because it ends complete. Well, True Blood, they, it was actually only one book left. Yeah, but True Blood was a hot mess no matter what you did. <laughs> well, they kind of changed their minds. Like, Sticky Stackhouse they, literally never saved herself through the whole series. You're well, making also, me <laughs> Lafayette <laughs> wasn't supposed to even be alive after the first episode. <laughs> exactly. And, and she never saved herself through the entire series except for opening her legs strategically. I'm just surprised they didn't have a yeah. scene where she just had her legs open and saving the day. You know, I just believe she time. did do that because then she like kill that chick and then like screw Bill like right after. <laughs> I don't remember her killing that chick and screwing Bill right after. She I, uh, killed. It, it, I believe they, it was like it was like her insane cousin or somebody. I don't remember. I, it was all about Alcid's thighs. So um, wasn't human. It wasn't someone that was human. Oh, it was it when she went to the Feylands or something. No, it was uh, this chick that kept coming back. I think she actually was a vampire. Or was she a werewolf? I don't remember. I just remember killing her, killing her, and burying the bitch in her yard. Was it Alcid's <laughs> wife? Was it? Was it her? Was... I don't know. Wife. I don't, wife? Maybe. It's been a long time. I don't know. The only thing I remember from True Blood is fucking Alcid's ass. Like, from the <laughs> actual books, though, what I do feel bad about is that I kind of feel like if 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 Eric manned up a little bit in the books, like like Suki wouldn't have had to save the world with her vagina, <laughs> but he didn't man up in the books. So, I honestly I think that the author did a very poor job. We're never going to talk about Suki Sackhouse. I'm putting that into the blacklist. I'm never rereading that book again. But on the on at, at least let's discuss the show because the show was pretty good. Um. What threw me off with her vagina not saving the universe in the series, though, is that she screwed everybody but her brother and that fat cop. <laughs> First any named character, any any named character that was male, she almost had always had sex with. That's crazy. She almost had sex with her great grandfather. Oh well, he was kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> There was nothing right here. <laughs> yeah, but you know, here's the thing: the whole face society thing and the whole marrying your cousin thing—that's part of face society that everybody just kind of looks the other way about. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, that that specific Faylor was a bit much for me. A bit much. I, I honestly I, I have a problem with the failure the failure itself, but I'm not I'm not I'm not player hating. I'm not player hating. You play I, hate all the time. You just keep it down low. I'm not player hating this though. I'm not I'm not hating it. <laughs> I'm not hating it. I'm just I have such trouble with the whole the whole entire urban fantasy layout because they have a lot of things that are labeled as urban fantasy that are actually paranormal romance and then I go and invest hours into fucking reading this fucking book only to find out the first one's paranormal paranormal romance and I'm like ah don't do this to me what got you into paranormal romance and urban fantasy like what what was that book that like tipped you into the genre into the genres I should say I'm not sure because like I went from I went from um I started reading urban fantasy like before Harry Potter. And I think I just kept on reading stuff. I just kept on reading and I just kept on reading. I read out I read out Barnes and Nobles. I used to go to Barnes and Nobles cuz we didn't have no money. <laughs> I used to go to Barnes <laughs> and Noble and crack spines and just sit there and just read books. So I read out the entire fantasy area just left for right. 
I just, I just kept reading. And that's what I do after work. I just keep reading. And like after school, I just keep reading it through. And and we, that's like so. I went from left to right in the fantasy section. For and me, that's it's... how I, I, I. But when I got to, done from left to right, I continued to keep reading urban fantasy, even the bad ones. So there was no magnanimous one author who changed my life, and that's the reason why I read it. It was just that. I realized that I enjoyed the interplay between humans of modern humans and fantasy elements in to, to, to today's society and kind of what it said about the way we treat those things and the way we treat those people. And I always found that interchange interesting, you know, I, and I, and I never really wanted to read dystopia because I'm a black person in America. I don't need to read dystopia, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so I mean, I wasn't given a lot of options when it comes to things I read in, and it was during the time when dystopia, dystopia was starting to take off big time. You know, yeah, big time. Lord help me. <laughs> See, I, 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 going back for me, it was a choose your adventure books, and then, oh. and that, that's what started my my love for fantasy was choose your adventure books. Now, like. I, my mom did read me like King Arthur and all that when I was little, the Knights of the Round Table and all that. That was my bedtime story, but it didn't click for me until like much, much later on what she was reading to me. But uh, choose your own adventure books, and then I went on from there, which was way pre Harry Potter, way. <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlance Chronicles. And then, and then, and that was that's what started fantasy. What started urban fantasy for me? Kind of, it wasn't really urban fantasy. It was actually paranormal romance. It was my my mom was a big reader. My mom would devour those damn Harlequin books like it was nothing. And we used to fight over books. And she got me into a writer named Jude Devereaux. And the whole Montgomery family sagas and everything, because all of her books were about the Montgomerys or the Taggarts or whatever. And one of the books was uh, Knight in Shining Armor. And it was about, like, a, a a guy, a knight from, like, early times, like, coming back in time to modern day. And... Is that, like, paranormal romance? Yeah, and, and that's, what, that's what started it for paranormal romance. And then it just branched off from there. And next thing you know, like, I fell in love with a, with the, a lot of Andrews pair like years later and here i am yeah. <laughs> Mind, have you ever heard of tamra pierce mm, no before harry potter there was tamra pierce and she was actually but the difference between her and harry potter was that tamra pierce always had female leads which was technically unusual for her time mm. always female leads which was unusual for fantasy at that time the leads always fucking picked up the sword and did their own work. And yes, there was technically sex scenes, but, you know, it wasn't like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was okay. okay but, but, but it was like, she always saved herself in, in, in general, or the guy and the girl, they traded off on saving themselves. Or if it was a girl and a girl, they always, or a guy and a guy, they always traded off on saving themselves. It was, it wasn't about, you know, it wasn't white nighty, you know, mm. which isn't what I really enjoyed reading even at that time. And I think that's part of the reason why I didn't, I think that's part of the reason why I, 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 I ended up, I, I avoid reading books with male leads because back then there were so many books with male leads, you know what I mean? See, I didn't really stick to that though, but, but kind of bothered my mom. And actually, as I mentioned before, what in what clicked in my mind later on about her reading to me the adventures of King Arthur and so on is that I didn't want to be the the damsel in distress that wanted to be saved. I wanted to be the guy with the sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and I look back on it. There is this there is this article um, about a a girl's mother who separated all the books and she put all the books in a pile she put a pile of books for you know about 20 books where guys uh, go on adventures without having any female romancy stuff and in, in, involved in it there's like a book of 20 30 books then there was a book of 20 30 books where um there was a female a female you know that he sort of was interested in and 
but he went on his own adventures and he saved himself. And she made a pile of that. Then she made a pile of books where there was a male and a woman in it. There was like, and they both had sort of leads and they both sort of saved a book. There was like three or four books. And then the smallest, tiniest pile of them all was a pile of books with female leads where there was no romance. It was, it was actually, it was actually like two books. Wow. And it was like, I was like, wow. And, and I remember the people on Reddit started like categorizing books on, I can't even remember the old Reddit post, but they, they, there, there was like this huge argument on Reddit and they started categorizing books and saying, no, no, it really isn't like that. And we're so angry about it or something. It was like Reddit or this forum or something like that. And they, the people went through and started categorizing all the best selling books on, 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 uh, on uh, Amazon at that time. And, you know, for, you know, and they could only talk about peak books that people have read, of course. Uh, and it was almost the same exact pile, except for there was zero books in the pile of female leads. <laughs> wow. <laughs> After they had this long, like, drought out flame war about it, it was like, yeah, yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> so that's probably the reason why I read books specifically. I'm sorry, Iron Druid, even though you were an awesome series. And I couldn't hate you. <laughs> see, I, I, I still do it. But, it, like, when it comes to, like, books for younger kids. See, I kind of failed on that. Because after, like, Goodnight Moon, I just started reading manga to her. And, and that's all she reads I think manga. More, and I read everything. Manga's more awesome. There, there are <laughs> tons of female leads, although they're somewhat objectified. I don't mind it because I don't mind it. <laughs> but... There is like there's like a female heroine track in Japanese anime and manga that there isn't in the United States stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's really like picky. Like especially when it comes to the anime she watched, she likes a lot of that dreary crap. Which I can't stand. You know, funny, but, you know the funny but thing is in nineteen fifties she's very nineteen fifties and nineteen forties. Do you remember nineteen fifties and nineteen forties you know, when this when there was still a studio system? Yeah. There used to be tons of movies where there was female leads and stuff. You remember? Mm hmm That was a huge thing. I, I, there was tons of things where the, the guy wasn't as port, important. Mind you, the woman wasn't getting paid as much. But the guy wasn't as important as casting that woman in the role. True, but it was also like during that. times of war, and they were utilizing those women as morale for the soldiers. But they, but that sort of that sort of um, female lead is important thing stayed after after that system after after the war was over, because there was there was even new female um, important lead people. Remember? Yes. There was tons of them, and then it just sort of fizzled out. I don't know why. I just think it's was important. I just remembered that, and I was just like, I was watching this old um, montage stuff of all the dance scenes. Mm -hmm. and all the dance scenes with all the female actresses and stuff. And I realized that they were more important than the male in the movie. I was like, oh, my God. You know, this is getting more away from uh, urban fantasy and more into feminism. <laughs> is it? Has it? Yeah, but with the breadth of urban fantasy, if you go, like, to the urban fantasy section, isn't it mostly just female leads? I don't know. I don't go to Barnes & Noble. <laughs> I'm talking about on Goodreads too. Oh, Goodreads. Um, I never. There's honestly, Dresden and there's the Druid. Well, Dresden is awesome. Like I kind of wish the TV show continued. Um, Iron Druid is great. Uh, Sandman Slynn, Richard Cadry, those are great. Um, but um, I, I also think that a, a lot of the the books that we like actually kind of blur that line for a lot of people between paranormal romance and urban fantasy, like the Alola Andrews books and Mercy Thompson and yeah. such. I almost want I almost want the Alona Andrews team to write some steamy romances. <laughs> I kind of like don't, because I like the the way they do their action and, and the way that they, they think out their worlds. I think that if they did Stingy Romance, it would drama. be lost. They could do a cop drama. A female detective, maybe. Uh, I'm so bored with all variations of pulp. Uh, pulp? And pulp fiction? Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of like... There was a, a series that takes place here in Las Vegas. Uh, what was it called? 
Zodiac or something like Signs of the Zodiac. And I remember reading one of the books where it's really Rockabilly Fiend, which is a huge thing here in Las Vegas, uh, the Rockabilly uh, um, lifestyle. And uh, like, it, it, it was very Rockabilly, and, what, and it made it really easy for it to turn into Pulp Fiction because it was very Rockabilly. And I was just like, <sighs> and I'm finding more and more variations uh, of Rockabilly slash Pulp, uh, uh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, so you hell, like I've it. even, it's, it's all right. There's also <laughs> a lot of steampunk Pulp Fiction that I'm kind of getting bored with, too. Mm, but then again, uh -huh. I don't like steampunk. I, I like I like looking at steampunk punk, but I do not like reading steampunk. If I'm that just, makes any sense. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Like the closest to steampunk that I would care for would be uh, Repo Genetics Opera, which is actually a mixture of different types of goth altogether, not just steampunk. But although the the Oni Andrews series, the new one, um, Clean Sleep one, has a weird cyberpunk. Thing going. Yeah, that is very cyberpunky. It's like a really like techno cyberpunk, cyberpunk sort I, of. I do like cyberpunk. There was actually a series I started that I can't remember even the name of, but it was a and it was a dude. Uh, he used uh, his computer to do magic. Hmm. Like he would actually like pull spells from like out of his computer monitor and whatnot. We were having a discussion on Twitter a while ago about. Hexing using a, a curse or a hex via Twitter to to make the uh, circle larger. It was like one of the weirdest. It was weird. It was really weird. <laughs> it was really weird. It was really weird. It was super weird. Oh, there's the Geek Mancy series. I forgot about that. That's uh, that actually falls under urban fantasy. She uh, will magic I, using pop culture. It. And oh, and she's legally blind. We don't get many of those. Female lead who's legally blind. <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, Geek Mancy's. It's pretty good. Um, let me actually find who the author is. I apologize. I'm terrible with that part. But if I absolutely fall in love with your book, I will remember you forever to the point that I'm talking about you all the time. I, I know. Eat I, a lot of like geeky fans that you're like, oh my god, I have a geeky fan. Like if we if you join us in our hearts, you know, <laughs> we're both like that. But I think what I think what is underwritten and what is understood about the urban fantasy series is that. It is when when it's done in, in a place that's not New York, San Francisco. Well, they don't really do tons in San Francisco, actually. Not anymore, at least. My favorite my favorite thing is when they pick a new city and they write something about the city because the city becomes part of the magic and the lore itself. You know, I really a, got into the the early Fever series, um, uh, Caramary Morning, Moaning, whatever. And and because it uh, the early early parts of the Fever series actually started off as urban fantasy, and now it's just sex, sex, fame, magic, sex. It reminds me of Anita <laughs> Blake, though, right? You remember Anita that Blake? Was so much worse than Anita Blake. That's the worst part. It makes Anita Blake seem like I don't know, playing hopscotch. <laughs> But uh, you know what? Though? But it turned I this think... way. It went from urban fantasy into into porn. <laughs> you know, I think part of the reason happens is they have one too many sex scenes in one of the book, and then they turn off their normal urban fantasy reader, and then once that flips into that sort of paranormal erotica sort of stuff, they just keep having to do bigger and bigger things, and it just turns into a mess. Well, like Karen Marie Morning, it, it started off, it was like four different series all taking place in the same world that, and it started off, it was like Paranormal Romancy with the Highlander series, and then it became Urban Fantasy, and it was Urban Fantasy a little bit longer, and then a book just opens up with people just fucking. <laughs> yeah, and then they just <laughs> went from there. <laughs> you know the worst part is, I really enjoyed the first couple Anita Blakes. I actually I can really honestly enjoyed where we're that going. too. I actually, I really enjoyed it for a while, and then it it turned and turned in such she a way. She got like a divorce or something, and she hated the werewolf or something. Something happened, and she started hating people. 
it, it definitely and it just got messy. Yeah, it was it was it was a mess. But like, yeah, you know, and it's and I kind of get bored with that. Like, don't. There's nothing wrong with your male or female lead entering into a relationship when or having a long term relationship that's somewhat healthy. But when it just becomes just shagging, like as, and, and that as fast it, as hard as you can constantly to the point where you want to put you want them to put some cream on her. It, probably it was hurting. like it was like the Jessica Jones Netflix series without any action in between, just just her and Luke breaking the bed. <laughs> you know, Jessica Jones actually did turn the corner and stop breaking the bed, though. You know? True. But honestly, if a, if that black man was in front of me, you, we had this conversation where He'd I wanted to lick the, the bed screen. too. Yeah, we <laughs> had this conversation. I said I wanted to lick the screen. <laughs> He's so uh, beautiful. He's so beautiful. I kind of giggle sometimes. <laughs> See, I'm I'm more for uh, the gentleman who plays Shadow Moon. Uh, and I already told you, I take them both. <laughs> See, I just I just want one. I just want one. That's it. I welcome both. I'm not. I don't hate. I take. Them but both. then again, you know, I still have my childhood crush on L. Cool J because you know he hasn't aged. So. <laughs> no, no, he was the devil for sure. For sure. That is a beautiful man. He's a beautiful man. <laughs> And you know, you know, his wife yes, knew it. He's been with the same woman since she was. They've been together since they were fifteen years old. She knew she had a beautiful man. That's why she made sure that he made six babies so he couldn't go anywhere. Mm. <laughs> I just, I just put the lotion on. Just put the lotion on. Just... <laughs> like I, 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 I live. <laughs> I live for any LL Cool J friggin' interview because the moment homie licks his lips, it's over for me. I don't even remember anything else he says. Just, oh, you know, he's so beautiful. We're just having a moment. Wait, this was my urban fantasy. What? Yeah. What? Yes, urban fantasy. There should be an urban I, fantasy. The thing is, he looks younger every year, and I don't think he's actually getting work done. Well, he admitted in his book, like getting a couple of touch ups here and there, but at the same time, I don't know where those touch ups can be because that black did not crack his not at all. around his eyes. He's doing something, he's filling the bag, the bag in his eyes and around his eyes. But I'm not talking about his, his like skin and like his whole body is oh, like yeah. aging and backwards. Or no, something. he like bathes in shea butter. <laughs> I, I just like, ah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> That little just moment, it caught me off guard. Sorry, sorry y'all, it, it happens. Oh, Ooh. and to get us back on track, Geek Mancy is written by Michael R. Underwood, and it is on Goodreads. Yes. So, so we're out. gonna be dumping more urban fantasy into this playlist over time, but we wanted the discussion and you to know that we have talked about a lot of different books and we are always looking for a new book. So if you have a new book for us, don't forget to hit the recommends on Mistress of Reads on Goodreads, or you can send it to either one of us, um, which I've linked the Twitter feed thingy on the every single floor. So you can drunk dial us, whatever you want to do. We want to know. We want to oh, know. Yeah. We're always looking for a new one. want to know. I got, I got sent a message a while ago, uh, like within like, I think a couple days ago about Dante's Dante's Valentine's or something like that. And so if they have the audio book, which is one thing I really love about urban fantasy, it almost always has an audio book. Thank you. <laughs> and it's, it's and it's not because we don't love to like hold the codex and read it, but you know, I'm, I, I'm a single mom who homeschool y'all and I have a career. I, I don't have time to hold shit. I'm holding I other can cook, shit. clean, fuck, do everything while the audio book is playing. 3 a.m. when 3 a.m. when I am too tired to sleep, but yet yeah, too tired. wide awake to do anything else, I could be listening to it while I'm baking bread. And you think I'm kidding about baking bread in the middle of the night? It happens. It does. I, I, you know, we haven't talked about it enough, but I highly advise you if you have gone from like reading Harry Potter or something, or you did something like that when you were younger, and you want to get back into reading, and maybe you're reading um, what's it called? Um, romance books and you're all out of romance book and you were used to love Harry Potter or something like that, read paranormal um, romance or read urban fantasy. And most importantly, actually get the audiobook because you can be up in your car or on the BART. Word. Mind you, that one time when I was reading Erotica on BART and in my earpiece moaned, I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> but No, I, at least you didn't traumatize your kid. <laughs> 
the it was a, out the it was a, the second book in the new fever series and it, it's because i liked the first book though there was though it was kind of had a creep factor to it the second book everything was all great and then next thing you know it, it's like i have to have him inside me and it's casted so like you got them both like moaning and groaning and that kid's looking at me like mom and i'm like um we're gonna turn this off for now um What's on TV? <laughs> I've got an evil laugh. I don't even know what to do about it. I'm going to roll with it, though. <laughs> well, I highly advise it. So thank you for, for reading our playlist. There is more and more of us on the playlist of awesomeness of urban fantasy. I don't know if you're... Do you want to read some... Par- do, you, do you read sci-fi? I don't... I'm not opposed to the sci-fi. It just depends on the sci-fi. There's like this weird urban fantasy sci-fi thing that I'm an alien from something or other that I I, I got recommended twice like last year, and there's and it has a full audiobook thing of it, and they always have good covers. Yes, I'm a cover whore. Don't judge me. <laughs> Though she's not much of a cover whore, because if she was a giant cover whore, she would have never ever gotten into the Alone Andrews books. Let's be honest. <laughs> I, I admit that I didn't read it as soon as I could because of the cover. <laughs> and the only reason I did read it was because she sort of looked black on the cover. Fools me because she doesn't look nothing like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've never seen anybody, I've never seen a best selling author have such cover woes as the Alona Andrew pair. I've never seen anything quite like it. It, it's like truly mind-boggling and it's like what's going on here i think if they had a good cover it wouldn't sell well at this point because there'd be something wrong it'd be evil at this point you know yeah <laughs> all right so i'm gonna wrap this up and i want to say thank you for joining us continue listening to the playlist just put that shit on auto you know every time you hit a new book you'll run across us on goodreads we may have read it come talk to us Come talk yep. to us. We want to hear you. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm Mistress of Reeds. I'm Boo. I am Madame Vu. Vous le coucher avec moi. Oh, the worst part is I, I even think- winked. So <laughs> <laughs> you're the linguist with the magic tongue, so you do your thing, girl. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for taking your joy of books and fun with us. And we will try and get to um, the whole uh, mature reads, the whole mature stuff that nobody else does except for one other lady on BookTube. Couple months from now, because we need to rest. You know, there is a book that we do need to talk about. What book is that? Bombshell. Oh, that was so good too. That was a really, oh God, was really so good. good book. Did, did we talk about the marriage books together? Not all of them. No, some of them. That, that of upset them. me though. She upset me with those. We will make an exception for CD Reese, who always emails, who always talks to me, and always sends me a message back because she's awesome. This is not a plug for the author or anything, but it's a plug for the author. <laughs> <laughs> So, thank you so much for joining us, and we will get back on the. Uh, we will get back on that horse. Yeah, we will. Mm. That's on like show. a horse. <laughs> Bomb thank show. you. Thank Bye, you, everybody. <laughs>